Hey class, it's Bill back, continuing a video on array int list. This should say array int list, not array list int, but uh, that's what we're working on. The first video got into the concepts of how it's going to work, capacity versus size, a whole bunch of things like that that work good, uh, and then we're, we started actually writing code for this. <clears throat> so we looked at some of the capacity versus size, what are some of the methods, we grabbed some stuff from an interface, uh, we started to talk about what if we ran out of space but we didn't code that up, we talked about the constructors, we talked a little bit about preconditions, so we're on our way, we're doing good, now we just need to continue our writing, and the fun interesting parts here uh, get to be something like this, right? Because in an array list, you can not only add at the end, which is what this one's going to do, you can also add at any given index, which is interesting. So the uh, first thing that we're going to have to do is think about what does it mean, right? If you want to add at position 0 and you've already got 10 elements in there, what do you have to do? Well, you have to shift them down, right? You have to move the other 10 down because they want it at this spot, and an array has no magical way to do that for you. So uh, the other thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to think about what what is a valid index here? Because for a lot of the other ones, right, a lot of the other things like we did with get or with set, we can call check index because size minus 1 is the upper limit. But with add, maybe it's okay if they add at the size element, right? That would be just adding at the end. So is that really illegal? No, it's probably legal. But we can't then use our check, right, our check index, because then it's off by one, right? So in this case, we might have to add our code again, right? We might have to duplicate that code or think about writing a helper. You could certainly do that to try to put those things together. In this case, we're only going to look for greater than size, not equal to, right? And then we're going to do the same thing through. I keep wanting to put through. So we're going to just go copy this because we're lazy. So we're going to put that right here, right? must be 0 to size. Okay, so now how are we going to move those things down? Well, it's really not that hard to do, right? First we need to make sure that there's room for it, of course, so we're going to still say ensure capacity size plus 1, right? We're still going to always do that. And then what do we have to do? We have to move everything down, so where should we start? Well, if you think about it, you don't have to swap these things because you don't really care that you, because you're writing over a lot of them. So if you start at the end and you actually move each one to its left over by one, you're sort of leaving, you know, you're, you're going to make it all work, right? Start at the end and copy the, the size minus oneth element over size and then you go to the left and do the same thing. So you don't have to have a temporary variable to do that because you don't care that you're writing over that next spot because it's already the right thing. Draw that out, right? Draw that out on a, on a whiteboard if you need to figure it out. But what we need to do is we need to start at the end, right? So we're going to do uh, for the index starting at size, for the index greater than the place that they asked us to put it, we're going to go backwards, right? We're going to go backwards. And for each one of those things, we're taking the thing at that position, right? And we're replacing it with the thing in the position before it. All right? That may seem funny, but again, draw it out on paper, and you're going to see that that actually works out all right. Then once we're all done scooting things over, now we just plop into that same position that we want the element, right? Whatever was in there before has already been copied over to the next spot to its right, so now we just write over it, right? And then, of course, we increment size, okay? So now we have an idea, uh, we have a, a, some code that should work to add things at whatever position you want. Again, we'd pop over to main or go over to a test class because if we're writing all this thing, we're probably going to write some tests to make sure that they're right because a lot of times you won't get it right the first time, remember. So in this case, um, I think that code is pretty solid. Think about it. Take a screenshot there or pause a minute and make sure that you agree that that stuff works, that you're copying things over element by element. If it were easier to write on a, a whiteboard here, then we could certainly do that. But uh, hopefully that uh, algorithm makes sense to you. Okay. Likewise, I think that you can see that remove is going to be sort of the opposite thing, right? 
So when we're going to remove, I think you can see that what we're going to have to do is first, in this case, the index has to be valid, so we can just use that, right? And then, uh, similarly, since they're removing at a certain index, let's go ahead and remember the thing at that position by the same logic as before, right? Return element equals element data at that index position, right? Now, what's the difference here? Well, in the difference here is with adding, we started at the right side at the end and moved back. Here we're going to go the opposite way because we're having to write over that position and scoot every other element over. So it's kind of the opposite of the code above. In fact, let me scroll up so you can compare the two things, right? Index equals this. We're going to keep going until it's size minus one, right? because we're scooting them over each time so we're going to uh, we're going to write over that one that's okay so then we're going to do plus plus and then for each of those things what do we need to do we need to take the thing at the index position and set it equal to the thing at the position in this case after it All right so in this case, we were doing the thing before it, starting at the end, moving this way. In this case, we're starting at index, and we're pushing each one, right? We're, rep we're taking each one and replacing it with the thing after it. So whatever used to be at the end is actually going to be copied, right? Whatever's the last thing is going to sit in two spots in memory, but we don't care. Why? Because we're about to do this. Right, size goes down by one, so whatever that last item was that got copied over to its left, the final copy is out of range anyway. Size no longer cares about it, so we just decrement size, and of course we return the element that we remembered. So it's a matter of just copying data either one direction or the other. Add does it one way, remove does it the other way. Draw those things out for yourself on a whiteboard and or a piece of paper and convince yourself that these uh, are working, right? That these are copying things in the right direction. And I think you'll see that they really are, right? Now, the rest of these are going to be very straightforward, right? I'll just copy these in because I think you'll see there's really nothing very exciting about index of, right? Right? It's just going to go through and start at the beginning and look to see if that element is the same. Now, we are using integers, so we can get away with this. If we run into the right one, we just return it. It's only going to find the index of the first one, right? And if we don't, then at the end we return negative one. So that's pretty straightforward and contains, we can actually leverage Right? We can leverage the work that we just did above there and say, hey, I'm just going to use index of, and if index of is greater than or equal to zero, then that's perfect. If it's negative one, that's perfect, right? So actually I can just return a Boolean indicating where the whether the returned value from this was greater than or equal to zero. Was it a real thing or not, true or false? Right? So really that's a lot of our code, right? That's a lot of our code. And so I hope you see that that is a that is a fantastic start to the array list code. The fun part still comes down here, right? Because we still have to to do this ensure capacity, which is a really big deal, right? That's kind of the crux of it. Uh, also, I guess as a good citizen, I should probably do a to string, but that's really kind of straightforward too, right? We can use kind of a fence posty kind of thing where we say, look, if size is zero, then just return that. Otherwise, put a bracket, put the first element, go through the loop, each one put a comma and then the element data and after it's all done tack on a bracket right so we can turn the thing into something reasonable with a, a sort of normal fence post algorithm so really what is left for us to write is this ensure capacity I'm gonna stop this video here because that really covered some crucial matters of how ArrayList shift things over when they add and when they remove, uh, but this ensure capacity is going to take some special thought, so I'm going to stop the video here and continue the next one focusing just on ensure capacity. So thanks for watching.